Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company accounting lesson. In our last video, we explored the direct write-off method for accounting for bad debts. Now in this video, we're going to take a look at a different method, which is the allowance method. And within this method, there are actually two different ways to deal with the allowance method. And there's the percentage of sales method, and there is the aging of receivables method. Now. For now, I just want to focus on the allowance method and how it affects your debits and credits. And then, then at the end, I'll go back in and I'll show you where percentage of sales comes into play. So here we have all of the same data for the direct write-off method. However, now uh, we have uh, these extra dates at the end of the year where we have to do an adjusting entry because what we're going to do is we're going to use this allowance account in order to account for these changes. and. Um, you'll kind of see how this affects the overall process. So at the end of year one, on December 31st, we have XYZ Company determining that 1% of its net credit sales will be uncollectible. And it also tells us that the company had 60,000 net credit sales during the year. So let's really consider what happened in this transaction. What they're doing is they're estimating how much of their accounts will be uncollectible. So rather than focusing on the numbers we're going to come back to that in the end let's focus on the accounts that will be affected this is the allowance method portion of this now whenever you have an adjusting entry using the allowance method you are going to expense the estimated amount at the end of the year and you are going to put that estimation into an allowance account so let's start with expensing it in bad debt expense and we're going to leave this blank for now. We will fill these in later. And we are going to credit allowance for doubtful accounts. Now, when you see this credit to allowance for doubtful accounts, you might ask yourself, well, was that a liability? Is it a capital account? It's actually a contra asset account. So assets typically have a debit balance. However, allowance for doubtful accounts, this is a contra asset. It's a special type of account that offsets accounts receivable. So instead of increasing with a debit, it increases with a credit. And the reason for this is because if we took a look at our balance sheet, we would have accounts receivable, we would have allowance for doubtful accounts, and the difference between those two would be reported, and that would be its net realizable value. So allowance for doubtful accounts, whenever we're crediting it, we are increasing it, and whenever we debit it, that will be a decrease to allowance for doubtful accounts. So let's leave these blank. We're going to come back to this portion a little bit later so you can see the percentage of sales part. So after December 31st on year two, during year two, we have another transaction where XYZ company decides that a $500 account is uncollectible. So now this $500 account, we need to take into account the fact that when we were doing the direct write-off method, we would debit bad debt expense and we would credit accounts receivable. However, we already debited bad debt expense for our estimation. So here, what we're going to do for our debit is actually debit the allowance for doubtful accounts account. And what this does is it takes away that amount that we are as, that we are actually writing off right now. And what is our credit? Well, we're still writing off an account, so that would decrease the accounts receivable. So now at the end of year two, we have another adjusting entry. The company had 45,000 net credit sales during the year. This is actually just our information in order to record our adjustment to the allowance account. So rather than focusing on these numbers for now, let's go ahead and put more question marks in there. We are going to come back to that. Let's focus on the basis of the allowance method. The allowance method, at the end of the year, we're always going to have to debit bad debt expense and credit allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay. Again, we'll come back to those later. So in year three, we have some more write-offs. And remember, whenever we have a write-off, we are going to debit allowance for doubtful accounts, and we are going to credit accounts receivable. Here we go. And for 450 and 450. So that does not change. And again, when we do it the second time on September 6th, we are again 
writing off an account, so we'll still be debiting allowance for doubtful accounts and crediting accounts receivable. Okay. And then at the end of year three, we have some additional information. This is going to help us with our adjusting entry to allowance for doubtful accounts. However, at this point, we don't care about the numbers. We will discuss that in a minute, but we're still going to be doing the same entry. Debit, bad debt expense, credit allowance for doubtful accounts. That will not change, it just keeps going. So now that you have kind of an idea on what we do whenever we adjust and what we do whenever we write off an account under the allowance method, now let's focus on the percentage of sales portion of the allowance method. Now the percentage of sales tells us how we are going to come up with this number. In the next video, we'll take a look at this from um, the aging of receivables method perspective. So the percentage of sales says that we take the percentage that we estimated and we multiply it by the net credit sales each year. So in this case, we say that it's 1% of 60,000. Remember, whenever we're saying it's so-and-so of this, that's multiplication. So we have to multiply in order to come up with that amount. So let's take a look at our second one. We still are using 1%. And in the end of year two, we had $45,000 in net credit sales. So the same thing for year three. It's still 1%, but in this case, it was $80,000. So as you can see, the main thing to focus on when it comes to the allowance method is learn your debits and credits, and then the percentage of sales and the aging of receivables, which we'll see in our next video, is going to help you come up with the amounts uh, for those adjusting entries. So stay tuned. We're going to take a look at the aging of receivables method next. Make sure to subscribe so that you get updates whenever a new video is uploaded. And in the meantime, Happy studying.